Hey, how's it going? Alex here from Ideaspot, and in today's WordPress tutorial, you're going to learn how to set up the Easy Updates Manager plugin. Easy Updates Manager is a WordPress plugin. Now, there are two versions there's a free version and there's a premium version. The free version, we're going to cover that today, and the premium version, we'll talk about that a little bit later. For most people, the free version is probably going to be enough. It covers the main issue, which is if you're tired of logging into your WordPress site and having to do all these updates to your themes and plugins manually, then this plugin will, will cover all that for you. So no need to log in and check updates. It does save you time. So if this sounds interesting, keep watching. Now, in our last video, I showed you how you can actually configure WordPress to automatically update without using a plugin like this. So if you're interested in that, check out my blog on ideaspot.com.au. I've got a, um, a how-to tutorial on how to make your own little PHP script and use that to update, but it doesn't have anywhere near as many features as this, and this is very easy to set up. And the main thing that this is good for is you can select which plugins and themes. So if you're having some issues with a certain plugin, updating and um, breaking features on your site, for example. And it can also um, integrate with the Updraft Plus backup plugin. So you can roll back to a certain um, previous version of your website if you found that a certain update has caused problems for your website. So it makes it a little bit easier to use uh, with this feature as well. So let's get started. So first thing we do, let's head over to our WordPress dashboard. I'm in plugins and we're going to add a new plugin and I just search for updates and you'll see that Easy Updates Manager is by far the most popular updates plugin. So we're just going to go ahead and install that now. And when that's ready, we click activate. So from here, you'll get the message that the plugin has activated and you'll get a new menu option on the top bar there. You get updates and you'll also get the ability to configure Easy Updates Manager. So either way, let's go and click this one for configure. Now it'll say thank you for installing and, and there'll be some options here for setting up the Updates Manager. So this is like the master switch here. Uh, you're gonna wanna leave that one turned on and then let's have a look at quick configuration actions. So uh, there's a few default uh, setups you can use here and I think the best one is just auto update everything. So we can go ahead and click that um, that'll set up and it'll change all the things to automatically update everything. So auto update all the WordPress core updates, all your plugin updates, all your theme updates and all your translation updates. Now you will get a notification email by default uh, and every time it runs updates, it'll email you. You don't have to get that. I'd like to disable that. I don't really need to know when everything has been updated, but you may like to have um, enable uh, email notifications if you want and then maybe just send it to a, uh, a separate email address where you don't have to look at it all the time, but you just know that it's there. But anyway, I prefer just to disable it. So we're pretty much set up now. I mean, for most setups, this is all you need to do. Just have all this automatically updating. Um, there is some other options that we can go through, which I'm gonna go through now. So first of all, let's click on the plugins tab. So this will actually let you go through plugin by plugin and that will allow you to update them as needed. So um, by default, as we did before, all of them are allowed to automatically update, but let's say there was one that we didn't want them to automatically update. So um, Akismet, I'm not actually using Akismet, so we could just delete Akismet or maybe we could turn off the automatic updates. But really what this is for is if you found a plugin that when it updates, it causes problems for your website, um, then you could block it and then just use the previous version of the plugin and wait for the developers to fix the plugin for your specific use case. But otherwise, just allow them all. If you don't run into any trouble, then go ahead and just run them all. It's only when you have problems that you might want to block a particular plugin from updating. Next thing we'll look at is the themes. So again, Theme developers will periodically update their theme. So I've got a few themes installed. They're all gonna automatically update. If you've got a bunch of inactive themes, it's better to just delete them from the website altogether so they don't have to continuously update. But if you're regularly experimenting with this site, like this is just a, um, a development sandbox for my uh, tutorials. So I like to have a few different themes installed. Um, it's just fine to leave them all. Um, allowed, but I think for the most part you only need one theme and leave that one on allowed or if 
a theme update is causing you problems, then you block it and wait for a fix and, and then go back to allowing it after it's been fixed. So now let's have a look at the logs. And this is where it will give you a little log file of when updates have happened and when they have updated successfully. So uh, you can see if an update has failed or something, if there's been an issue, it'll show up here. But for the most part, you'll never need to look at that. So let's have a look at the advanced options. So most of these advanced options, you won't need to touch at all. You can exclude certain administrators from using the updates manager, for example. Um, I could, uh, I've only got the one user here, so there's no point doing that. Um, force automatic updates. You can force updates and that will force Easy Updates Manager to run straight away and update all your things because sometimes updates come out every few hours if a plugin is in active development. But by default, they're only going to happen every 12 hours and usually 12 hours is just fine. I'd like to leave it as 12 hours for the most part, but if you know an update has just come out and you really want to get it, then just come in here and um, force the updates to happen right now. And the other option that happens here is you can take a backup first with Updraft Plus. So if you've got the Updraft Plus plugin installed, I'm going to make a video on Updraft Plus, by the way, just, just to cover this as well, but um, it will back up your database. So if the update causes any issues, you'll have a backup and you can roll back in case anything happens. So this is good for um, just a safety precaution. Now you may or may not need this option. If your site isn't updated very often, you could just set Updraft Plus to back up every one week or every one month. But if you've got a very active um, website that changes a lot, you may wanna make sure that it's backing up every time an update runs just for that sort of safety. The next little thing here is the admin bar menu display, which is this little admin bar. So some people are a bit minimalist and they don't like extra things in their WordPress uh, dashboard. You can go ahead and disable that. There's no real need to have it up there all the time. So um, go ahead, disable it, get rid of it from the uh, admin bar. And then if you want to actually use up um, the easy updates manager again, you'd have to go back to your plugins and run the um, click on the configuration to get back to here. So Either way, I mean, it's easy to find if it's on the admin bar, but probably because you never really need to go back into this plugin after you've set it up, you may just want to disable that just for the sake of um, being a bit more tidy. The last thing you've got here is reset options. You can go back to defaults if you've messed anything up, go back in here and just uh, reset everything. So I'm not going to do that, obviously. I'll just leave things as I've, I've done them already. So um, let's look at the premium options. So like I said before, I think most people are going to be okay with this free version, but if you've got a particularly high risk or high value website, you might want to use safe mode to make sure it's always compatible with the server that you're running. If you're running a fairly recent version of um, PHP, then you probably don't really need to worry too much. Um, if you're running an older PHP, then maybe uh, it's worth getting that safe mode. You can schedule updates just in case you've, you're running a big um, heavy plugin. You don't want them to update during peak times and put um, load on your server maybe. I'm not sure. I don't really think this is going to be um, important for most sites. If, it's only if uh, you really need to run them at a time where it lowers the risk of um, disruption to your website. The other thing here is delayed updates. You might want to delay updates by a few hours just in case a developer pushes out an update too quickly, it breaks something, they go, uh-oh, but make another update and uh, you experience some outage for a, a, part, a certain amount of time while the, you wait for the next update. So if you were just to delay the update by a few hours, then that might avoid the issue. But it does come with a bit of risks because if there's a zero day threat where you're under attack and you need the update straight away, you don't want to be delayed. So um, that's a good feature and a bad feature in a way, but um, it, it's really up to you. I think some plugins you'll want to delay them because uh, they might introduce problems, but I think for the most part, you won't need to worry about that. The, probably the best feature is the safe mode for um, sites where you can't risk um, updating a version of a plugin that might not be compatible. You can't risk the compatibility. So uh, that's really the main feature. I mean, this plugin, the premium version, really isn't very expensive. If you're running a, a corporate or um, any commercial type site, I think the website is only it's $29 for two licenses. So um, it's, it's not a lot of money in that case, but if you're just a hobbyist or a student or something, uh, there's really nothing to worry about in running this free version. So, I mean, that sort of just wraps it up. I really think I should do a video just on Updraft because these two 
integrate really well. So stay tuned for that. I mean, hit the subscribe button and I'm going to come back with uh, a video just on Updraft. I'll put the link in the description so you can find it. But until then, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.